Hello and welcome again. This is Lino Tadros and this is the start of lab number five. We will have two videos associated with this one. And this one is uh, going to show us how to take semantic kernel as an SDK and a framework from Microsoft to the next level. So we will be able to build uh, embedding services using semantic kernel also with the vectorization without having to explicitly use the Azure OpenAI to go against an embedding model like ADA002. I'm gonna do the whole thing through the semantic kernel SDK itself. And in the second video, we will actually show you how to create a semantic kernel agent that has its own tools that we can actually use to be able to engage in answering questions uh, coming in from Cosmos DB and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing, let's open up the code again. We're gonna to go to the C-sharp based uh, web API, Contoso Suite web API in here. And I wanna start with the program.cs. If you open up that code, you will notice we already in lab two used the semantic kernel, so it's already been in use in here, which is fine. And you will notice that I have the underscore kernel in here and everything in the singleton. But there is one more thing that I need to do. Other than the kernel builder that I added add Azure OpenAI chat completion, I would like to add something very specific to actually the, um, the semantic kernel. So how do we actually do something like this? I'm gonna go after the line, uh, number 51 in here, where I added the database service. Let's go ahead and add a couple of lines. And what I would like to do in here, let me add another line tab, and I'm going to bring in a few lines of code. I'm going to say, uh, let me also bring this in and do shift tab so I can actually make it look a little bit better at least. <laughs> All right, so let me uh, do that. And this line and this line. All right, sounds good. So I just added a semantic kernel function called the add Azure OpenAI text embedding generation that will take uh, the deployment name, the endpoint, and the API key for Azure OpenAI. But I'm not going directly against OpenAI in Azure for GPT-40 and with the API key. I'm going through actually a function built into semantic kernel itself. I want to do everything through semantic kernel for this, okay? So what are these red squigglies in here? Well, as I said in the beginning of this, uh, of this series of videos, I'm using a specific version of semantic kernel, which is 1.02, um, I'm sorry, 1.20.0. Even though they are at uh, 1.29 and 1.30 and so on, uh, the code written for this specific uh, workshop has been using the 1.20. And it's moving so fast that we probably would have to change the code almost every day <laughs> to keep up with all that. So what is this red line? If you put your cursor over that red line anywhere, there would be a comment in here to show you that this is for evaluation only. And the semantic kernel does not actually um, uh, advise for you to use this in production because they can actually change it in future updates as well. And I'd like to live on the edge and I'd like to still use it. So how do you actually do something like this? Obviously, there are some pragmas in Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio that you can actually suppress that specific issue. Um, and the name of the pragma is SK, um, semantic kernel EXP0010. So you'll notice if I go down all the way to this dialog and say quick fix, and then there is the third one done, suppress or configure issues. Let's click on that. It will show you suppress uh, semantic kernel EXP0010, and I'm going to click on it. And that will put a pragma in the beginning and will disable and restore it right after this function. So that's pretty much like telling the compiler, shut up, I know what I'm doing, I still want to use it, so don't keep me from using this function in semantic kernel, even though it's for evaluation only. Does that make sense? All right. Now we'll go down a little bit. I want to see actually the few lines of code that says builder.services.addSingleton, and I'm going against the Azure OpenAI client. Well, in reality, even though that worked before, I actually don't want to go directly against the OpenAI client. I want to actually use semantic kernel. So this code, you can delete it or you can comment it out, do whatever you'd like, but we do not want it to compile. So I'm going to come in here, we say toggle the lines, and now this uh, entire add singleton for Azure OpenAI is out of my code completely. All right, for right now, we're done with the program.cs. Now I need to open up my services. And you will notice the vectorization service.cs that we actually worked with in uh, lab number two. You will notice I'm still using the Azure OpenAI client in here, and I know that I'm not going to be using that. So I will need to remove this guy from here. Let's take it out. And I need to put something different inside of here. But before I even do this part, I'm going to go ahead and remove also the using of the Azure AI Open. I'm not. You can comment it out if you want. I'm just going to remove it, and I'm going to bring in the semantic kernel. Let me just format this correctly. 
I'm going to bring in the semantic kernel and the semantic coring embedding inside of there as well. Obviously, the read only is not needed anymore. I'm not going to use an underscore client anywhere in this code, so I'm going to delete this line of code as well. All right, so what is this going to be? What is the first parameter being passed to our constructor? Remember, this used to be the Azure OpenAI. So in here, I'm going to be passing kernel, and I need to create a variable for kernel itself itself in here. Let me go ahead and bring that in as well. So right inside of there, we'll be bringing in, this is inside, instead of the one for the Azure OpenAI, I'm going to say kernel underscore kernel, and I'm going to equal that to the kernel being passed in from the constructor will be passed to me from the system itself. Awesome, I'm almost there. Let's go down a little bit and take a look at the task near the function for the get embeddings. Like I said, I'm not using underscore client. I do not have access to the Azure OpenAI anymore. I'm going through the semantic kernel, so I can delete this line or I can just go ahead and comment it out. And this line in here that says var embeddings await, let me go ahead and take these line. And instead of using an embedding client to get the generate embedding sync using the text being passed to it, which is the question, I'm going to go ahead and replace that. Let me format this uh, in a nicer way. There you go. And what I would do, oops, let me clean this up. Okay. I'm going to say var embeddings await. I'm going to use the underscore kernel instead of the, the, the client. And I'm going to say get required service. But there is an issue here as well. The issue here is that iText embedding generator service is also for evaluation only. So it has the same problem that we had before with the pragma. If you put your cursor over it, it will tell you, see, it's for evaluation purposes only. And if you'd like to shut it up, <laughs> you will need to use the pragma for semantic kernel exp0001. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say quick fix right there. We'll suppress it and we will use a suppress for that 0001 and it will also put the pragma like it happened before above it and will restore it right after it executes that and we will be in a pretty good shape at that point all right the last thing here there is a red line underneath the value that's because there is a difference between the embeddings coming in from azure open ai and the one coming from semantic kernel it actually is called embeddings.2 array there is no value vector in there so i'm going to delete this in here and we're going to leave it as a two array and that would be the right way to deal with that let me do a control uh, s to save everything same thing with the program control s to save everything and i should be in good shape at this point believe it or not we are done with all the changes in here in the code there was not much it was like three different places where we're going to add this functionality for the pragma for the program.cs and also for the vectorization service.cs i'm ready to run this remember there are two things that need to run at this point the api which is a c-sharp application and also the python code for the dashboard as well so i will have to have two different terminals let's uh, go ahead and start with the first one we'll say cd source like we did before cd source there you go and then we'll see contos so not the dashboard not the vectorization this is the one the web api one okay so let me clean up the screen and what i would like to do we'll say dot uh, dot net run all righty and once i know that it's running correctly and there will no errors or anything like that and it's running on a specific port number 5292 i believe um yeah 5292 i will leave this alone running and i will go to the other uh, powershell in here and i'm in the correct uh, uh, folder which is the contoso suite dashboard this is the python streamlit application in here and if you remember what we had to do before like a million times already we just go ahead and run it by saying python dash m streamlit run index.py let's go ahead and run it and that will take a few seconds and then the web browser will open up for the local host 8501 let me bring it in here as well to this uh, monitor so you can see it there we go and how do i actually test this at this point let me go ahead and go to the vector search there it is and i'm going to enter a new query this time it will say show me requests relating to elevator noises Alrighty, so this is an important piece as well. You can set the maximum result and the percentage of the similarity score as well. So maybe here I'll say, just give me the first 10 of them and I'm gonna put it at 78%. You can try things out and see how it works. But if I say submit, remember we've done something like this before, but this time I'm not going directly against the, uh, the open AI model for ADA002 like I did before. Right now, everything is going through the semantic kernel framework that is in charge of doing the embedding on both sides from the question and the vectorization to get the values as well and it found eight different results out of uh, not 10 but uh, eight is good enough for me with a 78 percent so if you take a look at the percentages 
I can see if I go over 84%, I'll only have two. Let me see if this is working. I'm going to come back in here with say 84%. I should get only two of them coming back. And it's correct. Two of them are 84 or above for the hotel that has anything to do with the elevator noises. And you can see the details gives you an idea about how that is working as well. Hopefully that makes sense. I know there was not a lot of changes. It is the same thing we've done before, but I promise you based on the code we're running, this is now completely using semantic kernel without any uh, straight development against the Azure OpenAI itself for, as far as an endpoint API key and embedding model. Sounds good. I hope this was useful and I'll see you in, this, in the next video, which is very exciting how to create Asians in semantic kernel itself. Thank you so much.